Hello, Elevate Hair. It's me, Tate O'Neill, um, here for another one of our homeschool sessions. Uh, you might have known me from Mullet Monday and Bob Goals, and today I thought it would be nice to actually do something that was a bit more of a Pixies type of cut. So I've got two mannequin heads for you. This one was pre-colored by Savannah Netkin, um, also known as Elevate Color. Um, some beautiful, vibrant, and uh, this is gonna function pretty much like a pre-done model for us. Uh, we'll come back through and do some refinement, but it's also gonna show what a sort of, a, what I'm calling a long pixie um, can look like with the side part. I get a lot of questions if I do a center part, what is a side part, how does that work? Um, and this needs some refinement, and we'll do that, but you can kind of get a, a, an idea of what we're trying to go for the silhouette. Uh, but we'll be cutting it over here on this mannequin. Now, the reason why I, I chose this mannequin, this is one of our girls from Mullet Monday, is because I'm anticipating you getting a lot of this in the salon when things go back up, right? So we know we're probably gonna be hanging out at the house until um, May, and our hope is that on May 1 we are rocking and rolling. In that particular situation, you might have a client that hasn't been in in three or four months, depending on her, her regimen and routine before all this happened, right? So this is what I'm anticipating, and this is a bit elongated, but someone who comes in kind of with this look. You know, her hair used to be like this, and now it's grown out. And again, this is a bit long, but you kind of get the idea where it's, it's longer in the back um, than she typically likes it. So we're gonna do a round graduation technique. This is my favorite technique to do on, um, pretty much on most short haircuts. Um, this particular application is a little different if you've done round graduation or graduation in general uh, than you're used to. And I've created a little bit of a head sheet to show you how I'm gonna navigate this haircut, right? So first thing I wanna do is that I wanna isolate the back. And the concept around this really just revolves around me focusing on areas of concern first. So if I have someone whose fringe is really long, they can't see, well, I'm probably, as a behind the chair artist, I'm probably gonna go ahead and give her fringe look and take care of that right away because it's the thing that she is most bothered by. In this particular situation, I've got someone who had a pixie and it's quite grown out and now she doesn't like the mullet, okay? And I know that's blasphemy here at Elevate Hair that someone would not like the mullet, but they're not for everyone. Um, and so that's typically what I hear. I feel like my haircut looks like a mullet. I can't stand it. Okay, that means that I need to isolate the back first and take care of that first. So here's a head sheet of what I've done here already. So I've got ear to ear section, right? Top of the ear back, which is essentially all the back of the head. And then this is a back view. So I'm gonna be coming at this across like so. And then once I finish that side, I'm actually gonna come across to the other side and you're gonna see my sections mirror these and they will actually crisscross, right? So I will end up with a little bit of a point in this area which will give, will show shape. So that's, that's where we're gonna start. Once we finish that, then we'll do the top and the sides and I'll sort of talk about navigating that. Um, so step one, I've isolated the top, now I'm gonna go to the sides. This really works well when you want to remove weight from, and length from this part of the head at the nape, okay? If you were thinking about doing like an asymmetric bob, like we look at this mannequin, certainly not a bob, but it kind of has a little bit of that bob, you see kind of a longer, you know, a more prominent line on that side. If I think I'm gonna do a graduated bob or any type of bob and I start here, the odds are I'm gonna put a hole in here. So again, it is graduation, but it really specifically targets these corners and eliminating them. So if that's not what you wanna do, then you wanna start more in the center. Again, this isn't a bob, this is gonna be a pixie. So for your bobs, I mean, for your pixies, this is the way to go. So I'm gonna start off by getting my mannequin head tilted slightly away from me and at an angle. And this is really just gonna allow for me to get in, okay? Tools of the trade. Small, elevate hair comb, again, fine teeth and wide teeth. Um, elevate hair, gold clips, and then our elevate precision shear. This is a five inch shear. Everyone needs a five inch shear in their, in their toolkit because when you are doing short haircuts like this, it is important for you to be able to get into these tight spaces, okay? With a five inch shear, I can get in here very neatly. The bigger the shear is, the more difficult this becomes and the less precise it can be. 
So I'm gonna start off again right here, and I have an idea of where I wanna go, right? I have an idea of how this graduation is gonna, gonna live. I'm gonna start here on a mannequin. I'm gonna actually press that right on the neck, and I'm cutting just like so. The next section is gonna sit right on top of that, but I'm gonna elevate a little bit from that section. I'm gonna talk about combing a lot today. Um, or maybe I shouldn't say a lot, but I'm gonna emphasize combing today quite a bit because it's really critical here. And I'll get to that and get more to the top. So next section, um, you just heard our beautiful New Orleans street car roll by. I'm not sure anyone's on it, but it's rolling anyway. Next section, you can see my guide underneath, but I want you to notice I'm not down here where I was before. I am slightly elevated, just a few degrees. And this really is gonna help, uh, this immediate sort of elevation and being mindful of it right away is gonna help me uh, stay on course. This haircut can look droopy if you don't do it right and if you don't elevate at the proper um, spot. And I'm gonna show you my graduation waltz in a little bit and give you exactly how I do that. Okay, next section, Let's do one more clip, sorry. Get that out of the way. Next section here, I can see my guide down there. What I wanna do is I wanna be mindful of my finger position in this moment, right? If I come off, because this is over the ear, right? So if I lift up my fingers too much here or tilt them too far into the head, if my fingers go too far in, I can sort of create some flatness here. On this side, it's actually easy because your natural inclination with your fingers is to pull down. Um, but I want to tell you that right now, because when you get to the other side, it's really critical. Your natural inclination is to make it more flat on the other side. So you got to pay attention, right? So what I want to do here is I want to essentially hold my fingers, relatively speaking, down. Okay, and I can see my guide. I have an idea where my guide is here. Next section. Boom, there's my guide. I'm going to get in there. And then next section here section here. Okay, I'm going to move around. So I'm going to show you what's happening with me. First section I'm here and I'm stepping in, stepping into my graduation. If I stay stationary, right? So if I don't, if I stay in one spot and I don't come over here, what happens is I start to over direct this piece and then the middle becomes longer. So it's important that I'm kind of moving. And it has a kind of a one, I kind of think about it as like a one, two, three step, which is technically a waltz, which I don't know how to do a proper waltz. So for those ballroom dancers out there, let's not be too critical and blow up my spot. <laughs> uh, but I'll give you an idea exactly what I'm talking about right here. Um, sectioning and being precise on your sectioning is really important for this haircut. Uh, if you've been with me before, I've been using a razor. Today I'm using a scissor um, because I think it's the elevation and all the elements on this haircut are so important that I, I was afraid that if I used a razor, some of those key elements would get lost. So I wanted to kind of use a tool that definitely everyone's comfortable and familiar with. Okay, so step one in my waltz. I'm going to go back a step. I'm going to pick up where my guide was and I'm going to slightly lift up from there. All right, so that's step one. Step two. And then finally, step three. Notice I've got a bent in my knee and I'm moving around in this direction. And I'm getting slightly lower as I move in. So it is one cut, two cut, three cut. But we don't stand here when it's time to take the next section. We have to move back across. So again, one, two, three, and then I step into two. I take my section and I elevate from that spot. So I don't go all the way back to one. I go back to the second step. Take the section and I'll walk you through it again. Hopefully this makes sense. Do you think it's important to cut hair while you're standing? Um, me, yeah, I guess they mean as opposed to sitting down. 
Yes, I think that generally speaking, unless you're doing a, a static line, you're just doing a, a line and you need to be really stationary and there's some sort of situation, yeah, I think it's really important to move around. If I'm sitting down, I can't, I can't go from high to low, I'm stuck. Find that when you're sitting that you tend to cheat because you just don't want to move around. So I think in this particular haircut, you gotta get up. Um, it can be done, it's just more difficult on chair, right? So previous section, one, two, three. So I was here, one, two, three. Now I'm stepping back into two and I'm picking up my section again. So get in here, I want you to notice how this section looks. Started off, I was here, now I am here. So here we go, there, there's my guide. And now I'm gonna start cutting. One, stepped, two, and then three. Do you have another question? Yeah, are you doing classic graduation? Um, I call this tight graduation. Um, it definitely, I guess, the, the way that I would think of it is different than classic graduation is classic graduation starts typically more from the nape starts from the center, starts from the center and moves out. This is starting from the side and moving across. I think this was actually the, f this is sort of the foundation for if, if you're kind of into hair history, uh, what we call the firefly. And this was a um, haircut that was essentially invented by Christopher Brooker. And they were doing what they call block graduation. So they're in the center and they were moving out. And then one day Christopher was like, hmm, what would happen if we started it on the side? And um, that, that concept, that idea is, again, from what I understand, sort of the catalyst for the, um, for the firefly. So um, it is not technically classic. It's slightly um, newish, but it's not really new. It's been around for a long time. So it's classic, but it's not what I would deem as a classic graduation, more like a tight graduation. Um, for any of those Sassooners out there, I think it might be similar to, might be similar to an Orbit. I can't, I can't quite remember. I'm sorry. I'm forgetting my, my haircut history. Um, I took a little bit of a subsection here. I felt like, uh, just in doing the video that I, that this was too much hair to deal with. So I just sort of took another ear to ear section a little lower, uh, for those paying attention. Okay, I'm gonna reassess where I was. So if you ever have to step away from graduation, it's really important that you, when you get back to your chair, your client, you know, um, that you need to kind of pick up the rhythm where you left off. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of re-notice, like where was my guy, where was I? Here I was, I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit. This is where I was. Now I know in this next section where I'm gonna be. So I was here, and I'm gonna go back to that spot. Normally on a client, I would probably not be using my clips as much. I would just use gravity and the hair to kind of adjust it. Okay, where's my guy? There it is. Let's go ahead and talk about combing. So one of the things that I, I can't stress enough when I'm teaching is how important it is to effectively comb. Okay, one thing that I see every time I go out and teach a haircutting class is people who have this scooping technique. So they kind of end up combing like that. If you, I don't know if you can tell, but you see how when you comb, the, the, the hair is supposed to be here, straight out, right? When I comb like this, it actually pushes it back down. So what happens progressively, if you have the habit of doing this, now's a great time to fix that. If you have a habit of doing this, instead of your graduation being at the proper elevation, you're stepping it down. Instead of it being at that 45 degree or whatever, it's more like at a 30 degree. And then it progressively builds up and gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And so you end up with the bulky middle, um, which then you have to then correct. It's 99% of the time when I see that, it is a function of combing, right? So all the scissors do, boom, boom, they cut. They do one thing, snip, right? It's all in the combing in your hands that actually makes the haircut good, right? So first section, one, then I'm moving over a little bit, two, moving over even more, 
three. And in this situation, I'm actually going to have to come right across. Onto the bottom. Okay. And now I'm going to kind of comb it. Would you use a razor on this cut? Yes, and I do all the time, and I love it. Especially, I especially love it when I'm cutting a mannequin because you can see how pokey, if you will, this looks uh, just because it's mannequin hair. Uh, and with the razor, you can sort of diffuse the edge of the, of the hair and you manage to get the shape, but it's not as like stiff looking. So yes, I love to do razors with this. And I still have a razor um, with me today. So when we get to some of the top of the front, I might, I might pick up my razor. But for this, again, I, I really wanted you to see the elevation and all the little details of this uh, round graduation technique or tight round graduation technique. Um, so I, I, I went with my scissors. I also, I just kind of miscut with my scissors. I've been a razor guy forever. And then Elevate, we at Elevate made a, um, our own shear. And it was really awesome to kind of uh, work uh, on you know, finding the factory, picking the shear. Um, and I'm a big fan of them. So these Elevate Precision Shears, they're handmade in Japan. They are $350, but we're doing a homeschool discount. You want to show people this, Amber? Homeschool discount at Elevate Hair. Um, HS2020 is your discount. It gets you 20% off. Um, we did buy limited quantities of these shears, so I think there's only about 20 of each one left. So we've got a dry cutting shear here and a precision shear as well. They're both like 280 or something like that um, with your discount. So go to elevatehair.com and get yourself a new scissor what's, if you can. What's the difference of a razor cut from a shear cut? Um, it's really all in the end. So, I mean, how I described it earlier is a scissor is two blades collapsing. A razor, it's just one blade peeling, right? So the ends of the hair are finer, softer, and uh, thinner. And with the scissor where the ends of the hair are very blunt. Um, other than that, that's it, you know. Hair's hair, cutting is cutting. Um, I'm one of those people that I feel like if you give me a piece of broken glass and a head of hair that I can figure it out. Certainly, that's not my preferred method. But, you know, cutting hair, it's, it's whatever it takes um, to get the job done. Uh, it's about the effect, and I, I do like the effect of a razor. All right, so I'm kind of just picking up where I left off. I'm using some of these pieces down here as a guide. And notice I'm cutting up, right? So before I was cutting down, now I'm cutting up. That's gonna affect my haircut if I'm not careful, right? Because my finger positions were different. What I'm doing right here in this place, so I've done a little bit of the back. Now I'm gonna grab some of that hair that's over the ear. At this point, I'm gonna reference the hair that I've already cut here. So I kind of look at it now on a mannequin, it's super great because she's got plastic ears and they're perfectly balanced, right? So if I dampen this down, I'll keep the water different, bring it the same. I go, okay, that's right around here on her ear and then right here I can kind of judge and guess about where that's gonna be. Uh, when I, what I like to do though in this situation, honestly, is cheat a little bit in a conservative way. So I know, I just cut this. I know when I cut this piece right here, that is a good bit longer than what I have in the other side. I'd rather do that and then correct that than cut it too short. So I'll cut a little bit, then I'll go back over, re-reference. Okay, cool, it's just kind of hitting her ear right there. Now I just need to take about a half an inch off to get it um, balanced easier to sort of get that balance on a half an inch or less of a discrepancy than it is on two, three inches of a discrepancy. So that's, again, if you heard me before, I like to plan for some redundancies. And uh, when I'm doing something that isn't center, doesn't start with the center part, I want to have that protection. I want to make sure that I'm balanced. I don't want to have to do the haircut twice. Still a little longer here. So that's just like a little tip I have for you is plan for the second side you do to just be a little bit longer. Do you make left-handed shears? That is a great question and I we do not at this moment, but I have a list of about 20 artists who are waiting for left-handed scissors. So um, I will, uh, you know, when things get back up and running, I will 
produce a left-handed shear for all of you lefties out there. Um, this was our first run. So we, again, we're just a little bit more conservative. We didn't go for it all. We will get a left-handed shear. You don't realize how many people are left-handed until you make a shear. And then everyone you know is like, hey, what about us lefties? So I'm gonna, I hear you, I'm gonna get you one soon. The razor that will be coming out will be, um, will work both for lefties and righties. So we'll at least have that. So doing palm to palm, how will it affect the cut? Um, doing palm to palm, how will it affect the cut? It's just how I hold the hair, right? So it's just, I don't think about palm to palm so much as like, I just, that's just how I cut. So there's no way for me to not go palm to palm, right? I would have to flip my, the hair up like this. I guess I could do that. I could do that. Uh, but it just feels super unnatural to me. And I can't really see my guy. Here I can see my guide very clearly. It's right here. And I can do a couple things to make this more precise. So if you look at my fingers here, I'm using this bottom finger here to stabilize. So I'm not floating off my hand. I'm stabilized here. And that's how I like to cut. So um, I don't really think too much of my cutting palm to palm or overhand, but I think 99% for most of the time I'm cutting uh, palm to palm, especially if I'm doing anything graduation, right? If I'm cutting these things short here, then I'm gonna do palm to palm. If I'm up here, right, then it doesn't make sense to cut palm to palm because then my body position's off. This makes sense. So that's really about where my body is and where my, my shoulders are. If I'm up here, I'm on top, if I'm down here, I'm cutting palm to palm. There's a few people that have never seen a razor cut um, on a graduated bob. Maybe you could do that for your next video. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, and I can do even, I can do a little bit, I might be able to do a little bit of razor work on top so you can kind of see it. Um, there's two ways to do um, a razor graduated bob. One is to do one like a scissor graduated bob. Um, and the other one is to do something I call razor graduation, which is unique to the razor. So we can have that conversation um, soon. Uh, maybe even next week. I've got, we've got our calendar lined up, or getting lined up for next week. It's gonna be Monday cuts, Monday, Wednesday cuts, Tuesday, Thursday colors, and then we're gonna have a conversation this week. This week's conversation, I'm super excited about. We're gonna have Alan Ruiz and uh, Antoinette Beenders on Instagram Live uh, for a conversation with both of those artists. We'll do one rather than the other. Um, both phenomenal artists. Uh, Antoinette's won British Hairdresser of the Year, and uh, Alan has also won, always won American Hairdresser of the Year. And they are mentors for me. They did some of my first hair shows and first sort of hair experiences are with those two amazing artists. I was very lucky to be, um, to be able to work with both of them. And um, they work together quite a bit throughout their career. So it'd be nice to talk to them um, on Friday, three o'clock. Do the divisions or diagonal layers reach the center line of the head? Um, th at this point, it's not layering, it's graduation. Um, and then what you're seeing here is you're starting to see me crisscross, right? So these sections here, over here, let's look at this, right? The first section here, everything he this way. Now we're going back this way. So they're going to be crisscrossed things. And what this tends to lead to over here is you're going to see on this, you see a little bit of a, almost a, a point here. And again, this isn't refined. We'll do that later. But that's what gives it a little bit more of that graduated silhouette you might need to go back through and kind of alleviate that. But for education purposes today, we're gonna to leave that little point and a little extra. Um, when assessing someone with short hair, one thing I like to look out for is, what is their, where is their occipital bone? If their occipital bone here extends out a lot, then I don't wanna necessarily accentuate that. I might wanna flatten that. I might wanna start my graduation from the center. If the person's occipital is more hidden, it is more pressed into the head, and they have a little bit more of a flatter shape, then I definitely want to do this because I can sort of build up an occipital bone or, or build up more of a silhouette to sort of uh, balance out their lack of occipital bone structure. So one more section, then I'm going to start this kind of crisscrossing type of thing. And you can see this hair is just is disconnected, from, not disconnected, it's just not in with regular graduation. So all the stuff on the bottom is already done. Next section, holding straight out, and I'm not using a lot of tension here. This is just the tension that is given to me from my comb. And then I just come in and cut. Okay, one thing for 
I think we have some of our Aveda art students here today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Uh, one thing I want to talk about with um, all hairdressers is how to hold your scissors. Okay. You basically want to hold your scissors. Let's see, is this better? You want to hold your scissors like so. These two fingers here are kind of pressing down, whereas this one is kind of pressing up. This stabilizes, and this thumb goes in here, but it doesn't go in here, does not go in here. It sits more here, and that allows me to do, create a full range of motion with my scissors. When you have it stuck, it really limits, and it forces you to move your elbows and your shoulders in weird ways to get into tight spots, which leads to tension, fatigue, and strain, and possibly damage. Right, so being able to hold your scissors without pushing your thumb in is like the number one thing everyone should be working at home if you haven't executed this now. You're watching Tiger King on Netflix, sit down, get your scissors out, and practice your scissor mechanics. I did for years, just practice this over and over again so that I can move my scissors with very minimal movement on my bottom blade, okay? If you are an existing hairdresser and you know you're already into this, you're doing this, pro tip, Never, ever, ever grab your comb with your scissors in your thumb. I see this all the time. Never do this, okay? Always make sure your thumb comes out to grab your comb. Two things that are good about this. One, you'll have more freedom and movement to move your comb how you want it. But two, it prevents you from keeping your thumb buried in, right? So if you take this out, you at least have an opportunity to re-grab it correctly. If you leave it in, you're never going to pull your thumb all the way out and re-engage. So keep that in mind. Dropped my comb. Just going to grab my uh, purple one anyway. I've got three combs, so if I drop one, no big deal. These aren't chival or swivel shears, are they? Do you like swivels? They are not uh, swivel shears. Um, I don't have a strong opinion on swivel shears as far as like whether I like them or not. I think that there are some great ones, and I think that they can serve a function. My challenge with swivel, swivel shears is that hairdressers tend to um, cheat their proper mechanics um, and instead get swivel shears. So I've seen super technical hairdressers use them um, in kind of cool, unique ways. Um, I, I do appreciate the technology. My challenge with it is when people become lazy and when they just leave their thumb buried in their shear and then they, they get a swivel shear to compensate. Is this cut more wedge-like, a Dorothy Hamill cut? Um, it utilizes the same type of sections as I would execute that cut, but no, it is not going to be, it's not gonna have that look. It's gonna be much more modern. Remember, this technique came out like in the like late 60s, early 70s, this concept. So a Dorothy Hamill would be longer and more bold, like more bowly, if you will. Because I'm using proper elevation, then I, I don't have that situation going on. All right, so let's kind of have a let's kind of have a little look at what we've got here. All right, silhouette. Cool. So we've got a nice little silhouette, and what I'm gonna I'll do something at the end to amplify that by taking this even shorter. Now I want to connect in this top layer. Now, if you remember our original sections, it was ear to ear. I just felt like this was just too much hair to navigate, so I sectioned this crown off. Sometimes it's nice to section the crown off anyway because you never know how that hair is going to move. On a mannequin, it's very consistent. Swirls, if, you know, with clients are all over the place. So sometimes I like to isolate that swirl, that cowlick, the very top of the crown, um, so I can get everything else. I'm not fighting with it. Then when it's time to approach it, I can just look at it specifically and alone and make adjustments. Sometimes what should be cut here, I might need to cut over here because that's how the hair is going to grow. So we'll start here on the right, same idea, same sections, you know, and we're gonna continue these sections all the way through. We're just connecting into the bottom. Okay. First section, pick up my section from before, I can see where it was, there we are. Next section. Again, and I like to use my wide teeth, again, I think it's good to have both. So sort of just gently place this in here. As this head is drying, 
it's drawing into the shape that you leave it at. So if it's all over the place, it's gonna dry all over the place, then when it's time for the blow dry, you're in trouble because the hair's already set. So I keep it evenly damp and I'm always combing it and placing it, imagining how is this gonna look when it's all dried and perfect, and I try to get it into that space wet so that it's air drying in the place that I want it to be. Hopefully, I have to do very little drying on this. Full disclosure, blow drying is not my favorite thing, especially on camera. So I try to avoid it, and that's why we have it pre-done. For those just tuning in, can you talk about what you're doing? Yeah, I'm doing a long pixie um, using a tight graduation technique, uh, which is a technique that starts at the nape and moves across and then moves across this way. And your end result is going to be, right? And then your end result is going to look something like this. Color done by Elevate Color, Miss Savannah Netkin. Thank you so much. Okay, moving on to this side. It's going to be a good angle. I'm going to show you where I'm at from an elevation perspective. Just connecting in the dots. It's not a lot of hair to cut, but it's really critical hair because it is at the top. So this will expose you if you're not accurate. And again, this is for, for those just joining us, this is a haircut remedy for people who have pixies or have kind of a longer haircut-ish haircut now and who haven't seen you and won't see you for a couple of months. Uh, what their hair is going to be like is very long at the nape, and this is how to alleviate that in a pretty way. Next section holding all the way out. Can you give me a little time check? It's 3.30. Cool. Next section. And then next section it holds me straight out, and you can kind of see that point. Here. Kind of back and forth over. Sorry. It's a little moment it had to be done like that. Okay, so now I'm, I'm sort of assessing this and I'm combing it into place. I've got a little bit of an inconsistency right here. I don't know if it's possible to see that. But right here in this space, I can see there's a little bit of an inconsistency, a little bit of extra weight. Probably didn't get my elevation quite right. Didn't do my waltz um, perfectly. Um, happens sometimes, especially when we're filming. We're not using accurate body position sometimes. I can see it. Now I'm going to go through the same section I took earlier. And I'm going to see if I can find what essentially will look like a corner if I pull it out. I think it is right there. Yep, you can see it right there. And you can see there's my guide. And I just missed my guy just a little bit. So I'm just gonna go back through and just dust that off. Check it, okay, I think that got it. And it's gonna grow a little bit. It's gonna become more prominent here. Would you do color is. first before you cut? Um, it really just depends on the booking, like if, if it, that makes sense. Um, typically in a salon environment, yeah, I like the color to be done because then I can style it, blow dry it, and um, it's, she's ready to go. Um, sometimes you do have to do color after a cut, and it's totally fine. Um, my preference is to have it colored before the cut. Do you want to take the point off now? I don't. I don't because I'm not looking at the point as a, I'm trying to see the forest instead of the trees, right? So I see the point there, um, and maybe it's, maybe it's bothersome to some to see it, but if I look at it on a silhouette, it's giving her a little bit more of that kind of cute little beveled look. If anything, I need to kind of remove more weight here, and I'll do that later so I get more of that effect. Ira says, show how important body position is. Okay, Ira would ask to see my body. Uh, it's true, body position is so important, uh, and that's why I mentioned the waltz, right? So one, two, three, back to two. One, two, three, back to, do, to two. So as I'm moving across the head, I have proper elevation. The worst thing you can do with this haircut is stand in one spot. It's the worst thing you can do, you have to move around, okay? 
So the next section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a section just below the parietal, although she's perfectly round, so there's no parietal. Ira, actually, if you guys want to give him a follow, has a really cool uh, whole process around body position and as it relates to the clock. Um, it's really kind of neat. So give Ira a follow and, and ask him how he uses body position and uses this idea of the clock to communicate. So next thing I want to do is this side, right? So I've got this, I've got graduation. What do I want to do, okay? A couple options. One is I could start from the front and take this very tight and take it around. The other is if I want to leave it a little longer in the front, which in this case I do, I'm actually going to come at it from the back and, and over direct backwards. And that's going to save length. So my first section is going to be a bit of a weird one because it's kind of crisscrossing ideas. So but there, if I hold this out, you can see my guide from before. All right? Even though we're here, it still has a graduated shape. So I grab the hair just like so. I find my guide in the direction, and then I start to come in. And I'm moving, again, I'm moving into the head shape. Not too much, I'm not coming all the way here, but I am moving into the head shape um, because you just, with graduation, you gotta move. Graduated bobs too. If you're standing in one spot, if your feet aren't moving and you're doing a graduated bob, it's not gonna come out right. You gotta dance. Hold it out, there's my guide, and I'm just cutting back into my guide. Now, depending on density and just how you conceptualize this haircut, if you want it to look more square, you can vary this. You don't have to be as held back. You can tilt more square and take more weight out. In this particular situation, I want to leave it a little bit more round. And uh, if I change my mind, I'll change it and take it more square. Section out. There is my guide. Palm to palm. See how I'm holding my scissors? Step one, step two, and then step three. And again, I'm kind of moving my body, I'm kind of looking through, I'm looking through the graduation. So I'm seeing, I'm trying to see the graduation as I move out. Depending on how much weight I want, length I want to keep, I may or may not dip my shoulders and move my feet quite as far forward. Next section. Are you using a razor for the top? I'm, I'm probably gonna use a razor for the top, yes. I reserve the right to use my scissors, um, but I might use the razor for the top. Um, depending on the client or the hair or honestly my mood, <laughs> I may or may not use a razor in a client situation. So there's all kinds of variables. Um, that come to come in mind when I think about why I would use a razor versus a scissor. Um, today, honestly, I just wanted to show you the technique um, with the scissor, and I've been cutting with the razor for a couple weeks, and I just kind of wanted to cut something different. Sometimes my boredom <laughs> dictates what I do with the hair and, and how I approach it at least. Notice my discipline around that front little piece. I'm not taking it all at once. It's too much hair at once. Trying to be disciplined. Notice my elevation. Okay, I'm gonna hold my hands out here. That helps me remember my elevation. So instead of dropping my hands and trying to refigure it out, here was my last section. This was my finger position. Now I'm just gonna leave my fingers here, and now I'm ready for the next piece. That really creates consistent elevation. Just kind of leaving your hands out there. Almost think of it like a follow through. Okay. Now you can see how much kind of length we've, we've kept here in the front, but you still have that nice graduated shape. Again, I would not count this as a graduated bob. Um, it is different. So I'm gonna go now to the other side. Are you doing diagonal forward? Um, yes, it is diagonal forward in that particular business situation. It's a little bit more of an advanced haircut, so um, if it feels a little uh, swords don't feel too bad. I'm essentially doing two haircuts uh, in one, All right? So the sections are competing sections. Um, but again, it's, it's to get a very specific effect. And, and just so you know, for those who are kind of, well, just for all hairdressers, 
I hear a lot of talk about advanced haircutting. What's advanced haircutting? Advanced, there's only three things you can do. You can cut a line, you can layer it, or you can graduate it. Advanced haircutting or creative haircutting is essentially mixing those three elements up, and that's it. So you really gotta, in my opinion, execute on your foundations, be able to cut a straight, clean line, be able to do technical graduation, put in a shape, be able to create consistent layers, and then once you have those elements, then just remix them, reimagine them, throw them together in a different way, and that's really all that creative haircutting is. So next section, I'm finding my guide. There it is from before. And I'm just sitting that in. And white teeth to comb, combing it, checking. Next section, diagonal forward as someone Point it out. I'm gonna pick up the hair at the top of the graduation, going straight in with my comb. I'm not scooping, I'm not doing this. This will definitely screw up your haircut if you do that. Holding it out, I'm visualizing my guide. There's my guide. That is my thumbs and my scissor. I cut up one and two and then three. And I'm trying to get kind of just as low and down, if you can see my body position, I'm gonna get a little bit lower here so I can get into that spot. And that's why I think it would be very difficult to do this with um, a stool. Unless it had wheels and could go up and down really easily and all those things. Would you square it off at the end now or in finishing? I, I like to, look, I finishing, okay? So I like to work in planned redundancies I like to know that I've left something um, for me to decide later. I want to go through the technical process first, see how it looks, and then change. I don't want to change my, my path in the middle of my um, haircut, right? So I want to execute that and then finish. And then once I finish, then I can go, you know what? Maybe I, should, maybe I shouldn't have done that, or maybe I should have done this. And then I can make those decisions. Someone is left and right wary always. What key point should one consider? All right, say that question again, Emerson. Someone's wary when they move from left to right. Uh, what's one key point that they should consider? Um, leave the side, the new side you're working on a little bit longer than the other side and cut it and then check for balance and then recut it again. Uh, if you're doing a big change, it's hard to do a big change and execute the balance perfectly in the first go. So just know that, okay, I think it's this length. I'm gonna cut it just a tiny bit longer and check to make sure, and then you make your adjustments from there. So that would be my number one advice to someone who's a little wary of going from left to right. Um, and, and here's a good example of like things that can go wrong in the haircut, right? So we did this cut, and um, you know I didn't quite check for balance on this side, so now this side is just a little bit longer. Now I'm gonna to have to go back and take a little bit more length off. Um, and this was really dictated. Well, actually, you know what? It could be a section thing. So it could be a section thing. This side was a slight bit higher. So I'm gonna check this side and see if there's any extra length that makes it. But then I might have to go back to the other side and, and clean up my graduation just a little bit. Um, if you get off in your graduation because it is, it kind of builds off of it itself, so the next the next cut is built off the cut before. Um, a little bit of uh, indiscrepancy in your length, a little bit of off of your guide, and by the end of the cut or by the end of the section, it's, it's quite large. So taking this here, seeing where I'm at. Nope, I'm gonna have to go back through and cut that side. Again, it wasn't just the length, it was off. Um, what I like to say about hairdressing is what makes what sets a good hairdresser apart from a mediocre hairdresser or a great hairdresser apart from a good hairdresser? A great hairdresser is going to acknowledge that they are human and not perfect. They are gonna be able to recognize the mistakes that they made on a haircut and they're gonna know how to fix them. It's impossible to not make a mistake. Um, I've never, everyone does it. How you approach that, how you deal with that, how you notice that is gonna make you a good hairdresser or not. So this side just a little too long. I'm gonna cut 
cut that. I'm just getting all this hair out of the way. And I'm gonna dampen it down so it's a little wet. I think I just didn't quite elevate enough down here. I think I'm actually pretty okay right here. So, got my gold clips. Back in inventory if you guys want these clips, they're awesome. So I'm gonna pick up here. I think I might have just been too low on my initial, my initial cut, that's what it looks like. Let me see if I can find my guide. Yep, it was just that first cut. My elevation wasn't quite, my elevation wasn't quite high enough back here. And so I sort of overshot my guide. That's why the combing thing is such a problem because you can find different guides throughout the haircut. It's a moving guide, it's traveling. So that was my issue, picking it up. Didn't elevate enough, which is tragic coming from the creative director of Elevate. But like I said, everyone makes mistakes. Acknowledge, don't let it get to you. Don't let it hurt your ego. You made a mistake, no big deal. And then fix it. So I'm moving really quickly because I already did this. I know what my mistake was and you can see how much, can you see the guide here? You can really see how much extra, just being off a smidge, a tiny little bit at the very beginning of this pre-section, how it becomes a half an inch and then over to an inch by the time you finish. So very, very common, not a big deal. Uh, just gotta look out for it. And know this, that everyone's gonna have a good side and a bad side. So everyone's gonna have a side that is typically a little longer. Everyone's gonna have a side that's typically a little shorter. That's normal. Know your strengths and weaknesses. Acknowledge, acknowledge your mistakes and fix them. No big deal. It's not a tattoo, right? It's gonna grow back. How are you troubleshooting the mistakes you're going back and catching? Like, how do you know what specifically you've messed up on? Um, I know that in the front that it was significantly longer, right? So I knew this side was here and this side was actually down here. So I had to figure out what it was. So first, just a simple balance check does it. Another way to kind of check it at the, so it's still tiny, tiny, tiny bit longer on one side than the other underneath here. So now what I do is I want to check the graduation and pull it forward if I pull from the same spot. My graduation on top is actually pretty balanced. It's something down here that's, that's becoming too long. So it's something in my body position. Um, I'm probably pulling this out too far in this little section here. So it's a little too long. I'm just gonna go back underneath. I'm gonna go back underneath, pick that up, and I'm gonna try to move a little bit more forward. Once you catch my body position on that hammer. So here I am. The haircut I'm worried, the hair I'm worried about is down here. This is why I feel like it's like a dance. So here's the piece that I'm, that I'm worried about. It's too long. I pick it up. This is good. Maybe a little. Now I'm going to actually move. Move here. And then I can see my guide and where it's too long. Now I'm just gonna check. Nice, now I've, now I've got it. So I'm just gonna do one more section just to make sure. Um, I didn't just See, oh, okay, it's a little too long here. Let me just cut that off, right? It was really important to go back through the steps and make sure that I got the graduation exactly how I wanted it. Okay, so I think most people would just instinctively cut it, right? And look, if you're in a bind and you gotta go, and your client notices and you gotta do what you gotta do, whatever. But if you wanna be technical, sometimes you actually have to go through all the steps again, identifying it, noticing it, and then, okay, cool. Now we're good to go. Now we're more balanced. If you didn't catch it, would you fix it on the finishing? Um, I would, but I would still go through the process that I did for the top. So I still would check it um, going through the motions again. So it really doesn't matter at that point um, if I caught it wet or dry. I like to cut shapes with wet hair for the most part because it's easier. You know, cutting dry 
really is, is not the easiest thing to do. Um, the hair is thicker. It's not as, uh, the blade doesn't go through as easily. So I like to try to get everything I can wet. And then once it's close to perfect, then I can do my refinement dry. That's how I typically like to do it. Um, but again, every haircut's different. Every situation is different. Okay, cool. So now we've got the top. And again, she had somewhat of a fringe, a razor fringe. Uh, and I'm going to keep it with that razor type of vibe. I'm going to do a center part over there. We've got a side part. So I'm going to go straight back and just find something. Does that look center to you? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so now I've got the top, it's evenly damp. Now what I want to do is I want to isolate the front from the back. There's the front of her ear. I'll come that forward. I'll do the top. Now I've got the back. So I promised you a razor, so I will do a razor cut for the top. Got my Elevate hair. Prototype here, super jazzed about it. And I'm gonna start with this back section. And so same idea as far as elevation and concept before, holding it straight out, only with the razor, it's a little different because I'm cutting above my finger. So the exact same section, same everything. It's just this is being cut with the razor. And sometimes I'll do this on a, in a real-life situation anyway because it's the top, and it's nice to kind of diffuse the line, in my opinion, on the top. I don't want it to look like a Dorothy Hamill, as someone said. So using a razor from, a razor from the get-go is nice, but sometimes uh, just even if you did a scissor haircut at the very top to cut with the razor, it gives it a nice blend. It kind of gives it a nice, a nice melt in the layering and graduation. It's not as stark of a line. What's the significance of a razor versus a scissor? Um, it does the same thing. I can cut a straight line with a razor, but the ends are softer. It's one blade coming down. Scissors, two blades, right? So the middle of the hair on a scissor cut is just as thick as the end. On a razor cut, because it's one, the ends of the hair are finer than the middle, and that can give it a more broken in feel. Um, and that's about it. What am I trying to do with the hair? Am I trying to take strength uh, and weight away? Or am I trying to build strength? In this particular situation, I'm doing a hybrid. I wanted to build strength down here and up top, I want to take some strength away. So, yep. So you still move the same way with your body position? Yeah, 100%. It is a little different. So there are a couple things that you might need to worry about. Um, for example, with one side, you're going to be coming this way with the razor and the other side, you're going um, from this way. So sometimes you have to kind of navigate how the razor interacts with the hair, depending on what you're trying to do but for the most part it's exactly the same same exact section same concept just a different tool i will say the one nice thing with the razor is this v you can actually get without having to crisscross as much okay i'm just going to quickly guys because it's getting a little long and wet i'm going to quickly blow dry this back two seconds i promise you i'll be done very quickly I just noticed that the back was kicking up a little bit because the wetness of the hair. Someone wants to know why are you moving to the side horizontally versus vertically? Um, it was uh, the side, the subsection was horizontal. On the side, the subsection was horizontal um, because I was trying to separate the, the hair on top of the parietal from the sides. Once I had the subsection, then it was at a diagonal. So the sections were coming. In this particular situation, the sections were coming like this. And then there was a big section on top, but you notice it's horizontal, right? So this is just the top, right? So that's the prior ridge. And really, I sectioned out this guy here and this guy here a little separately anyway, um, because that's that's just a trickier spot. So this primary section here had nothing to do with the subsections. Why don't, why don't you use a feather razor? Um, I like an unguarded razor. I just like how it feels. I, I, I don't like the guard aspect of a feather razor. 
Um, I feel like it impedes the haircut, it slows me down, it disrupts my rhythm. Um, I've never cut with one, I only cut with this. Now I can cut with them, and you can do pretty much the same stuff. I just find that this is just a little bit nicer for what I like to do, and it allows me more options. I love options. Okay, so we did the back, that same crisscross vibe. I'm now gonna do the top, and I'm gonna do the same crisscross vibe before. So remember, here's our, sorry. Here is our center section. We are ear to ear. Here is the guy. Here's the hair that I cut and the hair that I haven't. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back through, same idea, diagonal forward. I'm gonna over direct back just slightly to catch that graduation. Moving the razor, cutting with the back of the blade. And just connecting the dots, getting back into the guide from before. Why don't you use thinning scissors instead of a razor? Um, because that's a good question. Um, for this particular look, I mean, how would I do that? I'm, I'm putting in a line. So there's there. When I finish this, you're going to see that there is. You can already see it. There is. Here's a line that I created with the razor. There it is. With the thinning shear, I could do that, but I'd have to munch and munch and munch and munch and munch. Um, depending on how good your thinning shears are. Um, a thinning shear can leave a mark. It can leave a mark of demarcation uh, that is evident. So the razor is very fluid. Um, it just melts the hair into itself. And so I like the razor a little bit better. Uh, I do have a pair of thinning shears for those who are wondering, and I saw my friends think that's blasphemy. I like using thinning shears on really short haircuts to sort of texturize in a in a salon environment. I know for my hair personally, my hair, especially in a couple of areas around the corners, around my crown, actually respond really well to thinning shears. And if you don't use them, then my hair gets really poofy really quickly. So it has a function for me, it's one very short hair um, where I'm trying to add some texture. Uh, very rare that I use them. I just bought from Shear World, which I'm a big fan of Shear World. If you guys uh, know Mal or from him, go check him out. Um, but I ordered a pair of uh, thinning shears from him recently, and it's the first pair of thinning shears I've bought in 10 years. I, I really don't use them that much. Okay, so now we've got this section. Now we're going to do the other side. It's already looking cute, in my opinion. I'm um, kind of imagining this on a real person and, and then being able to play with it and, and have fun. Diagonal forward, bring it back to the guide. And I try to come in the same motion, right? So it'd be very easy for me to come up. I'm actually, because I was cutting from top down on this side, I'm gonna cut from the same way this way. I want the razor to impact, go into the hair in the same sort of way, in the same mirrored way on both sides, uh, which is tricky. Um, but I feel like it makes a subtle difference on how the hair sits and lays and grows out. I'm gonna grab my elevate gold clip here. Get that out of the way. Pulling straight out. Emeron, give me a time check. It's almost four. Almost four, perfect. We're almost done. I'm trying to get these under an hour for you guys. Now, if you're like me, ADD sets in right away. <laughs> I feel like I have extra ADD lately. Next section, hair should be pretty much not coming to my guide. She had an existing fringe from Monday. Uh, and then the next step is really just checking for balance. So now what I wanna do, cause I have a little bit of a crisscross here and I want her to be able to wear this in, in a variety of ways. So here's your kind of, I think that looks pretty cute. Your, your pixie, and again, she had these, this fringe here before, but it's just kind of working. What I want to do is here, because this is the longest bit of the hair, right? This had to come all the way down. This had to come all the way down. I'm going to take a horizontal section right at the fringe. I'm going to leave the fringe out. Pull that straight out. You see how I've got a bit of a point here? I'm going to square that point off. Just at the very top, almost just like a mohawk section. I have this very top. 
Uh, this is a case by case scenario. If I have someone with really thick hair, I'm definitely doing this. If I have someone with fine hair, I might not need to. That weight might, might work. But I'm really just functioning in this little, this little space here and squaring that off. There's my guy from underneath. Really not a lot Instagram of Instagram live just ended. No. It's an hour. All right, Facebook, it's just you and I. You can restart that Instagram line if you want. Okay. Okay, so now I'm done with the top. I can visualize this, how it's gonna look, and I think it's gonna look really cute. Um, some of the things I don't love about this haircut is the bunchiness here. So I'm actually just gonna take this off for you right now. First thing I'm gonna do is gonna elevate my client. One of the most, two underutilized tools of all hairdressers. Number one, your mirror, which I don't have the luxury of having right now. Number two, your chair. I see so many people and the chair just stays in the same spot all day long. Um, use that to help your body, you know? Instead of me trying to get all the way down here, I can just lift her up. And now she's where I wanted her to be. Gonna do some scissor over comb. I'm using my Elevate Hair Dry Cutting Shears. These are five and a half, love. And I'm actually gonna switch to our Elevate Hair White Comb so I can really see all the hair that I'm gonna do. And I, I just wanna get this off. Now, some people might like this. You might wanna leave this on a client. You might wanna just kind of go through and, and texturize a little bit. You know, here's some little bit of texturizing just to kind of make that look softer and cuter and there's nothing wrong with that okay that it's it's 100 what the client wants um in this particular situation i'm just going to cut it off so i'm going to go through here and i'm going to start my scissor over comb i don't want to square it off so i'm gonna if you notice my comb it's coming out here and i'm not digging into this corner I really just want to focus on that. There is a little bit of a corner there I'm going to alleviate, but you got to be careful here. You don't want to go into your haircut too much. I just want to make that silhouette a little better. Next side. Can you see this? Try to get the light just right for you guys. Comes going up. The shank is somewhat thick. Does that bother the cutting? Um, well, it's not my precision shear. So in a, in a really tight situation, then yeah, I would want um, a more fine shear. This again is my dry cutting shear. So I actually kind of like the weight and the feel of it. Um, I'm definitely more of a, like this kind of shear guy. You know, this is what I really love, uh, but I can't, I, I've really been surprised by this year. I, I really have enjoyed it. I love it for scissor or comb. Sure, I don't want to be doing tight haircuts with it for the most part, but it is a five and a half. So it's not like a seven inch big shear. I can get into some tight spaces. Um, I just like the way it glides through the hair, specifically with scissor or comb. It feels very buttery. Um, so I, I tend to use it whenever I'm doing any type of scissor or comb. But I also use clippers too. So, you know, if I feel like I gotta really get down in there. Uh, I'll, I'll do a full on clipper cut, just like a barber. Uh, I love it. I, I, for me, it's not about the tool um, so much. This is about the results. I think you could be extremely technical with a fork if you had to be. So I'm not one of those people that believes um, that tools are good or bad. I think that's hairdressers. <laughs> not tools, they're just inanimate objects. That's what you do with them. Okay, so now I've got that. I've still got a little bit of extra here. I'm actually gonna go the opposite way. And trim that down. And then I can even, on a, on a mannequin or client, do a little bit of graduation just with the angle of my scissor. So my scissor's at a 45-ish, and I'm just coming down on the hairline like so. So I get a little extra graduation. And again, this is 
sort of lost art <laughs> and craft here on a mannequin, but just for you guys at home, I'm down. I prepped the hair with a lot of moisturizing agents, conditioners, uh, I love this new stuff, this Nutriplenish stuff I'm obsessed with. And they have a nice leave-in and they have a nice conditioner and that kind of helps prep the hair for me so I don't feel like it's so um, tough. It's nicer for my hair. So here we go. Here's my nice little cute long pixie. I'm not going to spend time styling it too much for you guys because we've been on for a minute. But um, yeah, just kind of nice shaggy. And again, you can see you've got your kind of fun texture here and you've got a nice silhouette and that corner that little that little tail if you will gives it a nice little shape so messy bowl someone with the center part and then you've got a little bit more of a straightforward side part same concept two different applications all right so off center and center and they look so beautiful together Thank you guys so much. Um, I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. Uh, we've got Color with Alberto. And don't forget Friday's special interview, Alan Ruiz, Antoinette Benders, 3 o'clock Central. See you then.